it is absolutely corruption. It's corruption of the highest orders. And it's, it's much worse than if government officials had been stealing from whichever treasury. We're talking about central bankers and central banks who advertise themselves as capable technocratic institutions that are able to easily confront and handle any crisis. Yet more and more we get evidence and events that show quite the opposite. In fact, central bankers, because they don't do money, because they don't actually do what they advertise, leave us all exposed to much bigger problems, which you look around, maybe you've noticed lately. And what are central bankers telling us today? They're saying, don't worry about anything. We've got it all covered. When the truth of the last time you went through this is being uncovered, which shows, as I've been saying all along, central bankers are all for show. And when you're all for show, and what your show doesn't show is successful results, then it's sometimes you have to resort to criminality, to lying, to cheating. The BBC this morning reported some new uncovered evidence that showed during the 2008 crisis, during the worst of the 2008 crisis, Central bankers around the world conspired with large banks to misrepresent the state of that crisis using LIBOR. Yes, they're going to lie about LIBOR. And of course, central bankers dismiss this and say, these are, no, the, we didn't do anything like that. We would never, at least the Bank of England uh, issued that denial. But we know that is consistent with how these, these central banks actually operate because they're not central banks. They don't have things under control. And when we know they don't have things under control because of market interest rates like LIBOR. This is why they hate market signals so much because most times, especially during the worst times, the markets tell us that the central banks don't have it under control. Here's what I wrote about the LIBOR scandal just a couple months ago, last December. It's been amazing to watch SOFR do in real time what its detractors had warned about the entire time. The Federal Reserve, through its various means, pushed the private market to adopt this thing after having demonized LIBOR for going on a decade. Why? Not any crime. The truth is LIBOR is a euro-dollar rate that far better represents the monetary system as it really is. And if that representation of the monetary system as it really is makes central banks and their policy look feckless and useless, of course, they're going to demonize LIBOR and try to get rid of it, which is why they used this LIBOR scandal they cooked up in 2012 as an excuse to get rid of LIBOR. But as you know, LIBOR didn't want to go away because the marketplace knew all along, as I just wrote, LIBOR is a euro dollar rate that far better represents the monetary system as it really is. So what is this new evidence about central banks? What is it they were actually doing in October 2008 to try to get the world to believe their magic tricks and their smoke and mirrors? And how does it relate to what we're going through today? That's what we're going to go over. The lies behind LIBOR. And the real lie is the corruption. The level of corruption that shows central banks aren't central banks. They run psychological operations. And this story is yet another layer to it. But first... I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. As you can tell from the title of the show, from the title of everything, the website, everything, we talk about the Eurodollar system. And so we have quite a bit of knowledge of what's going on with LIBOR. And if you want to have some of that too for yourself, we've got memberships available for you at Eurodollar University, the website. We also do research subscriptions daily briefing I do in partnership with marketsinsiderpro.com, as well as a deep dive analysis where occasionally we have to dive deep into LIBOR versus SOFR and what these things actually mean because central banks will, they won't tell you exactly what's going on because it's not in their interest to. Why is that the case? Well, Eurodollar memberships and research subscriptions, all the information about those at our website, eurodollar.university. So there was a report in the BBC, and I guess it came out earlier in different media outlets, but a reporter from the BBC, a fellow by the name of Andy Verity, who is the BBC economics correspondent, who was apparently doing research for a book he was putting together on the LIBOR scandal, uncovered evidence that back in October 2008, during the worst of the first global monetary crisis, a coordinated action among central banks 
to not just cut their benchmark interest rates, but also to get banks in the LIBOR panel to reduce, to greatly reduce the rates that they were showing for LIBOR. Why? Because if you remember at the time, and I have pointed this out so many times over the last 15 years, LIBOR was doing something very different than other market interest rates. And the other market interest rates were doing other things for the same reasons, but LIBOR in particular, what it showed was number one, that money is not just in the United States, that dollars are not domestic US government issued funds, they're all over the world. It, LIBOR is the euro dollar rate. It's money around the world. And this is the one of the key interest rates which shows the conditions in this global offshore system. So already the Federal Reserve is going to hate this thing because the Federal Reserve's mandate stops at the U.S. border. And it has, it has misled the public for decades into believing that the dollars are all local. The dollars are all easily handled, especially from the, the Federal Reserve branch in New York. So you have this offshore euro dollar, US dollar denominated rate that is doing something it doesn't want it to do, which is project absolute massive crisis at a time when the Fed is saying, we've got this covered. We just did a whole bunch of, of liquidity programs. Forget Lehman Brothers, forget all that stuff. We, we did a whole bunch of stuff that's gonna work. And instead, LIBOR screams ever higher and higher and higher which not only reminds the world, those who are paying attention, that money is, the US dollars are offshore in the Euro dollar system, but also everything the Federal Reserve is doing is having no impact. It's not working whatsoever. So of course they hate LIBOR. And so what Andy Verity uncovered was evidence in which, well, he, we'll use his own words from the uh, article, which I, I urge everybody to read the article. As, as the article says, UK and US regulators were told of a state-led drive to rig interest rates in the 2008 financial crisis, but covered it up, evidence indicates. Documents suggest lenders sharply dropped their interest rate estimates after pressure from central banks. Again, LIBOR was way up here and it stayed way up here no matter what the Federal Reserve or ECB or anybody else around the world did. Remember the Fed rate, rate cuts up until September 2008, especially through Bear Stearns. Those had no impact. The LIBOR spread remained throughout the summer of 2008 on into the fall, and it absolutely exploded in the middle of September, which, contrary to what the Federal Reserve wanted, which was to project calm, to project success, project liquidity and elasticity, when those were the furthest things from the truth. So it would make sense that if you're looking at LIBOR, and you aren't able to affect the monetary system in a way that you tell everybody you can, instead of fixing the problem, becoming a more effective central bank and actually introducing money into the system, which the Fed cannot do, instead, they lied. It makes sense. Whether or not they actually did, again, that, that'll be proven, but the allegation here absolutely fits in with the rest of the story. Let's go back to Mr. Verity. The evidence indicates that in October 2008, central banks, including the Bank of England, the Banque de France, the European Central Bank, Banca d'Italia, Banco de España, and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York intervened on a large scale in the setting of LIBOR and EURIBOR. EURIBOR is simply the LIBOR equivalent in euros. At the height of the 2008 crisis, when the bank lending had grown, ground to a halt, central banks around the world urged calm. But my investigation reveals evidence that behind the scenes, they were pulling levers to restore calm artificially, measures which would later be ruled to be against the law in the UK. And according to central bankers, when what they do doesn't work, it's okay for them to lie and break the rules and break laws because it's for our own good. Rather than being an effective central bank and actually introducing money, money into the system, they try to manipulate everybody's emotion. But you can't manipulate emotion if you have this market interest rate out there that's projecting, in reality, a very different set of circumstances than what central bankers would like to show. They want to say everything is fine, and so they wanted interest rates to go back down and everything to look as normal as possible. When the bankers in London in the euro dollar market, where the monetary crisis was actually focused, they weren't having it until apparently they got phone calls from their regulators who told them, we want to see some interest rates going lower. They show that following a coordinated cut in official rates by six central banks on October 8, 2008, 
There were also record falls in banks' estimates of the cost of borrowing euros by French banks, moves only explicable as having been coordinated at a national level. And again, the Bank of England denies these allegations, and I believe the other central banks refused to comment. So they're going to say, now nah, there's nothing to this story, when this is everything inside of the story that we already knew. Again, LIBOR told us in real time what was going on. And that's that these central bankers have no idea what they're doing. They really don't have any idea how to fix these problems. Keep this in mind in 2023. Now, October 8th, 2008, that was the day after the FOMC got together on an emergency conference call to discuss a whole bunch of things that I've talked about, including just recently. First of all, how they thought the fallout from the banking crisis up to that point was just going to be limited, but also they talked about exactly what Mr. Verity has uncovered here. This is October 7th, 2008, and the guy speaking is Kevin Warsh, who is, who is a member of the Board of Governors. I'd say that what appears now in financial markets is that, is that the thesis we've been talking about, that this is significantly about housing, seems to, to some extent, overcome by events. No, he's admitting here they thought this was a housing problem when it wasn't overcome by events, it was overcome by the fact this was a monetary problem. It wasn't even a banking problem. It was a monetary system problem, a euro dollar problem, which is why LIBOR is at the front of us. Continue with Mr. Walsh. Warsh, excuse me. I think the best way to view financial markets is to say that what's fundamentally going on is a reassessment of the value of every asset everywhere in the world. And what might have been triggered by housing has certainly gone beyond that. Again, not just about 2008, nor is this just about LIBOR. Think about this in the context of 2023. They tell you it's about treasuries going underwater because of rate hikes. We know there's a lot about commercial real estate, but as I also mentioned just recently, this isn't just about commercial real estate. It's not about housing. It's about how these things impact a monetary system that doesn't work. And as it doesn't work, and it creates problems in the banking system, and the Federal Reserve and other central banks have to react to it, their reactions aren't going to be successful, and we know that. And of course, they're going to try to suppress that information as best they can, rather than fix their own problems and get their own house in order. Continuing with October 2008, this is maybe the, the most relevant part to the allegations uncovered today. Third, on the policy front, and thinking about this as a global synchronized rate cut, it strikes me that the first two words of that phrase are more important than the last two, and that the focus on global synchronized action is an important symbol to markets, not just here, but abroad, that the world's central banks and policy action are very focused and that all of us will do whatever it takes to try to make sure that the real economy and financial markets respond more positively. It's all for show. And if, if everything you do is all for show, you have to get everything in order to make the show believable because it's so easy when everybody can look around at the world melt, melting down and say, it breaks the spell. It's easy to break the spell when you can point to LIBOR and say, wait a minute, you guys think that the monetary system is, is being well handled. We can see that it's not. Or the yield curve. No wonder they reject the yield curve signals because the yield curve signals tell us the Fed has no freaking clue what it's doing but yet they continue to lie to us and say that they do. That's what the LIBOR scandal has been all about, that monetary policy isn't about money, it's about show. And remember back when, the, when this first came up in, two, in 20, uh, 2012, um, there was one congressman who actually questioned all this garbage. It was a, a fellow by the name of Scott Garrett. You have been for, before this committee countless number of times since 2008. And if this is the crime of the century, as so many people are reporting today, Never once did you ever come and mention it as being a problem. Never once did you come here and say this is what you're going to do about it. And the reason they were bringing this up in 2012 wasn't because of the LIBOR scandal, which supposedly Federal Reserve and central bank policymakers had known all along, yet they never seemed to mention it. They were perfectly content to let the scandal go until what happened in 2011. The Fed had projected this idea that quantitative easing had fixed the monetary system, that a huge introduction of bank reserves, more than 1.6 trillion, was more than enough liquidity to manage 
the monetary affairs to make sure that there would never be another crisis again. But in 2011, there was another crisis. And we knew there was another crisis in many ways, including LIBOR. LIBOR rejected the official narrative and showed you that the euro dollar system was still in charge. And the euro dollar system, regardless of the level of bank reserves, was still suffering a crisis, another crisis just a few years after the first one. So of course they conspired and said, let's get rid of LIBOR. Rather than fix their own policies and programs, which would require them to admit there are not a central bank, that the monetary system is a euro dollar system that expands, that expands the entire world. It's not domestic U.S. government money. You just can't do that. In their mind, it was much easier to just say, let's get rid of LIBOR. Let's, let's sweep the whole euro dollar system under the rug. But of course, it's not so easy. The banking system didn't just resist for its own purposes. The banking system looked at these people and said, are you, are you kidding me? You can't just replace LIBOR because it's a very crucial rate. It tells us something that we want to know about the monetary system, not the garbage that you're trying to, t trying to sell us all the time about how effective central bank policies are because we know they're not. And one of the ways we know they're not, if this story is true, is because if monetary policies were effective in October 2008, interest rates would have fallen on their own. If interest rates, Federal Reserve benchmark policy rate cuts or ECB policy rate cuts or rate hikes for that matter were at all effective, the markets would respond to them. But that's not what we saw then and that's not what we see now. In fact, as I wrote just recently, uh, actually, this goes back a couple years. You know, I've been writing about SOFR LIBOR all along, especially about why they wanted to replace LIBOR. What could Bernanke say to Congressman Garrett? Could he realistically admit to, to upset Congressman in the middle of continued monetary and financial trouble that there was this massive offshore monetary system, most of which was conducted in dollars, where the Federal Reserve was essentially powerless to influence? His compromise was to, to suggest they had no sway over the setting the rate in truth, they had no sway on anything, no legitimate sway. This story in the BBC says they had illegitimate we means in order to try to influence market weights that they could not mark, could not influence because they don't do money. It's all for show. And obviously that matters more this year than maybe any other year, maybe apart from 2020, since 2011 and 2012 when this LIBOR scandal was first dug up to try to get rid of the main euro dollar rate. Think about it. What are they telling us right now? Banking crisis. We've got it covered. Sound familiar? What is the markets doing? The markets are pricing the fact, the high degree of probability that it's, it's close to being a fact. They don't have it covered. The real problem here is that what it does is it not just uncovers the corruption at central banks, but it also sows a whole bunch of mistrust. Because if the Fed will, will stoop, and the other central banks will stoop to this level of criminality, potentially the alleged criminality, then what, what, what else might they be doing to, cause, to, to create artificial information that looks good to their own case? They want to sell you the idea they have everything under control, and they will go to untold lengths to try to make that sale. I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, huge, huge thank you, Eurodollar University research subscribers, MarketsInsiderPro.com research subscribers, and of course, all the Eurodollar University members. Until next time, take care.